What's up guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo. The video you are about to see features a quick and awesome promo that I got to be a part of, sponsored by Warner Brothers to promote the release of the new King Arthur movie. So sit back, watch me be a villain, enjoy the video, and make sure to go see King Arthur Legend of the Sword in theaters May 12th. We've beaten you before! You'll never you win! You can't beat us! Only the chosen one can pull the controller from stone. A Netflix for gamers on Xbox Scorpio? What's up everybody, it's Ghost Robo, and today that's all we're talking about because it is a super exciting, super interesting, and super kind of weird idea. Recently, The Guardian conducted an interview with Xbox Big Boss Phil Spencer, and he talked all about the future of Microsoft gaming. Now, we'll get to the Netflix part in a little bit, but first, games as services. Spencer talked a lot about how these have been successful lately, and we know that to be true. Things like Destiny and The Division have racked up big bucks and have been very lucrative for their respective devs and pubs. And in an era when games cost more than ever, and in an era when we're about to push everything to 4K with Scorpio, they're going to need to find a way to recoup these costs. And so Spencer seems to think that the era of giant story-based gaming may be on the way out in favor of something more service-like. And he wants to bring that opportunity for games of services to smaller teams to provide, say, a 10-man studio with the opportunity to do something like that. And, and Microsoft and Xbox want to give them the infrastructure and the support to make that happen. Now, we know that Xbox has been kind of behind the eight ball lately when it comes to games. When it comes to exclusives, they don't have a lot going on. And their most exciting one, Scalebound, was canceled. So while Sony hammers out hit after hit, what the heck is Xbox bringing to E3? What the heck is Xbox going to launch alongside Scorpio? Doesn't sound like it's going to be a big story-driven title because Spencer says, quote, The audience for those big story-driven games, I won't say is as large, but they're not as consistent. You'll have things like Zelda or Horizon Zero Dawn that'll come out and they'll do really well, but they don't have the same impact they used to have because the big service-based games are capturing such a large amount of the audience. Sony's first-party studios do a lot of these games, and they're good at them, but outside of that, it's difficult. They're becoming more rare. It's a difficult business decision for those teams you're fighting into more headwind. We've got to understand that if we enjoy those games, the business opportunity has to be there for them. Now, me personally, I was hoping Microsoft would unveil a brand new IP that was very story-driven, that was very single-player focused to compete with the likes of what Sony puts out on a regular basis. But it sounds like they are going more service-based. It sounds like they're going more online, more multiplayer. And if you look at their titles, Forza, Gears of War, Halo, the upcoming Sea of Thieves, Crackdown 3, they're all very online-focused, all very service focused and Microsoft more and more wants to bring in the cloud. We've heard rumblings of this Xbox Game Pass where you'll pay about 10 bucks a month to get access to over 100 games from the 360 and Xbox One back catalog. They're saying it'll launch this year, but Spencer wants to take things a little bit further. He says, I've looked at things like Netflix and HBO where great content has been created because there's the subscription model. Shannon Loftus and I are thinking a lot about, well, could we put story-based games into the Xbox Game Pass business model because you have a subscription going? The storytelling ability in TV today is really high, and I think that's because of the business model. I hope as an industry we can think about the same. Subscription services might spur new story-based games coming to market because there's a new business model to help support their monetization. Huh. That is a very interesting, also slightly worrying way to put things because it sounds like he's saying that he feels single-player storyline gaming is, is a thing of the past. And... It strikes me as odd because we just saw Horizon do so well. We just saw Zelda absolutely crush it. Last year we had Uncharted 4 dominate. And I wonder if this is more a deal of what what is Xbox working with rather than what might be best. Because they don't seem to have the studios to put out those big tentpole story-driven experiences. Maybe they don't have a big new IP that is going to re-innovate that genre, and maybe they rather would go the complete service route. But this idea of Netflix, of HBO, of subscription-based gaming, they're clearly already pushing down that path for past games, but what about new games? Spencer talks a lot about Telltale and how he really likes what they do and how he really likes how they have been able to 
make games uh, quickly um, and put through a lot of, of story-based stuff. He says, it's why I really applaud teams like Telltale Games who have taken an interesting approach on narrative-driven gaming. They pick stories that people already know, like Walking Dead and Game of Thrones, and build a mechanic that's accessible. From a core standpoint, we may say, ah, it's kind of quick-time events. Is that a real game? But if you think about broadening the audience, you can't assume that somebody can left-click down on the stick and hold the right trigger and then hit Y over and over in order to solve some problem. As developers, we need to think about how to broaden our audience. So here Spencer gets into how he feels games in general may be too difficult, and some of the story-based stuff relies on long legacy franchises that have control schemes that are too tough and that he wants to expand the audience and open narrative-based gaming to a wider base. And that is where the Netflix thing really comes in because if you have more simplistic styled mechanics like that of a Telltale title, you can do this because then the story is the focus, limited interaction, some decision-based stuff, and you're okay to receive this once every month, once every few weeks, once every whenever. Now, as a hardcore longtime gamer, this makes me a little nervous. But it seems definitely like Xbox is going much more of the indie, small-scale focus for story, and the big budget will be about services. To, to back this up, Spencer says, I love story-based games. I just finished Thimbleweed Park. I thought it was a fantastic game. Inside was probably my game of last year. As an industry, I want to make sure both narrative-driven single-player games and service-based games have the opportunity to succeed. I think that's critical for us. He mentions it in a way that kind of separates them into two different arenas. Thimbleweed Park, Inside... Definitely fantastic games, no doubt, but they're of the smaller scale. And it seems like Xbox wants to keep the big budgets for things like Crackdown 3, for things like Forza, for things like Gears of War. Games that they can build services around. And maybe they will have a new IP, maybe they will have a new title, I gosh darn hope they do. But I feel like it's going to be something more akin to Destiny or The Division than it will be Horizon Zero Dawn. How do you feel about that? Are you okay with them shifting story-based stuff to a smaller scale, but then opening up this new possibility of a Netflix for gamers, it would incorporate a lot of their backlog and also incorporate some of these new, more episodic titles uh, akin to Telltale. And maybe they would sign deals with properties like Walking Dead or Game of Thrones. He mentions enjoying having something that's already known and, and utilizing simpler mechanics to broaden the audience. It feels like a very different strategy than Sony is taking with their exclusives, right? Because we've got God of War coming up, which is a complicated game. We've got Days Gone, which looks to be uh, another big open world uh, shooter with, with deep mechanics. We just had Horizon Zero Dawn, you know, they invested previously in Bloodborne, and it feels like we're at a divergence point where the two companies are going different routes with their first parties. And I just wonder if that's the right move. I think this idea of a subscription model and of a big catalog of games is something that is really enticing. If done well, if priced appropriately, if given exclusives and given content that people can get behind and at a broad level, like something uh, along the lines of Walking Dead or, or you know, the Telltale titles, I feel like that could be really successful. But it, it is going more in the direction of the mainstream and less of the direction of the hardcore. And I know they hope to really get devoted players to to latch onto their service-based games. People spent a bajillion hours in Destiny, so maybe it still does uh, capture both audiences, and maybe that's what Microsoft is going for here. A way that they can kind of put Xbox in the houses of, of everyone. A way that they can capitalize on the original vision of the Xbox One, which was this multimedia monstrosity. That all has been scaled back, but maybe a subscription service is the way to really tap into the more... Uh, mainstream gamer and offer them simpler control schemes, more stories based on things they know, and a cheap price of entry so that they can try out a whole bunch and not commit to $60, not commit to DLC season passes, not commit to 100 hour titles, not commit to games as services. I think this really is the year where they're going to set their own course and forge their own path and kind of go in a direction that makes Xbox feel a bit different from the rest, and perhaps that's a great thing. Right now, they are struggling uh, to catch up to Sony sales-wise, and, and they're doing well for themselves, but that gap is still there, and, and one way to, to make up for that might be to take a different approach. Look, it's worked wonderful for Nintendo. They did something completely different in their hybrid Switch, and they've been very successful thus far, and continue to do so. Heck, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sold to 50% of the Switch install base on the first day in the United States. That's insane. So maybe this is really a great idea, but let me know in the comments below how you feel about a Netflix-style service for games with some exclusives and some cool story-driven stuff, and let me know how you feel about Phil Spencer's assessment that Sony is really the only one that can do these mega story-driven single players great, and so maybe we shouldn't even 
do them. Maybe Xbox should be all about services. Maybe Xbox should be much more about multiplayer. Maybe Xbox shouldn't try and tap into the magic that Horizon Zero Dawn has created. Do you think that'll work for them? Are you okay with PS4 being more of your tentpole, linear, single-player, uh, story-driven game house, and Xbox being more of a cloud-based, service-based, epic multiplayer house? How do you feel about that? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up. Super pumped for E3 this year. I will be there covering it all. Cannot wait to see Scorpio. Cannot wait to see the games. Cannot wait to hear more about the Xbox Game Pass, Netflix on Scorpio, and what the heck Microsoft is going to do with their lineup. But until that time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day. Hope you are pumped for E3. Cannot wait to get more gaming goodness. Until then, everybody, thanks again. I love you. Have a fantastic day. Drink some hot chocolate, and we'll see you all later.